Hi guys, in this video, I'll walk you through the basics of TensorFlow and unleash the power of crucial methods in it. Let's first discuss what TensorFlow is. TensorFlow is an open source framework for carrying out end-to-end -end machine learning projects. It actually is more than a library. This is because you can implement all the steps of an ML project with this framework, such as data pre-processing, model building, and model serving. With this framework, you can tackle a lot of machine learning problems, such as image classification, NLP, recommendation systems, and time series analysis. TensorFlow has many APIs that make your projects easier. The most important of these is undoubtedly Keras. Keras is an API designed for humans that allows you to easily build deep learning models. Another important API for loading data is TF.data. TensorFlow has a large ecosystem, but don't worry guys. Keras and tf.data are enough for implementing your deep learning projects. You may wonder how fast TensorFlow performs mathematical operations. This is because this framework is written in C++, which is close to computer language. But you can also use this framework with other languages such as Python, Java, Swift, and R. You can even use tensorflow.js to run your models directly in the browser. Awesome, we briefly looked at what TensorFlow is. The best learning is learning by doing right? It's time to get our hands dirty with coding. You can install TensorFlow on your own computer. However, you can use this framework with Collab, a cloud service of Google. Fortunately, TensorFlow is pre-installed in Collab. To work with this friend, all we need to do is import. Let's import TensorFlow. Let's write, import, TensorFlow, as, tf. Let's have a look at its version, using version. Here you go. Nice, everything is ready to dive deep into TensorFlow. TensorFlow revolves around a data structure called tensors. These tensors flow from one operation to another. This is where the name of TensorFlow comes from. It is crucial to understand the tensor concept for implementing AI projects. You can think of the tensor as a container that holds the data. Actually, a tensor is very similar to a multidimensional number PY array. But the tensor also holds a simple number like 42. So, a tensor can be zero-dimensional or multidimensional. Now, let's explore how to work with tensors. For example, let me create a zero-dimensional tensor. We can leverage the constant method for this. Let write, scalar, and then call the constant method and pass 3 to it. Let's see scalar. As you can see, the tensor has no dimension. We can see the dimension of this tensor with the ndim method. Let's write, scalar, and, ndim. As you can see the dimension is zero. A tensor containing only one number is called a scalar. A sequence of numbers is called a vector, it's actually a one-dimensional tensor. Note that, the dimension of a tensor may be called an axis or rank. We can use them interchangeably. Let's create a vector now. Let's write, vector, and, let's call the constant method, and then, pass 1, 2 to it. Let's see this vector. Next, let's look at the dimension of this vector. Let's write, vector, and, ndim. As you can see, we have created a one-rank tensor. Let's move on to creating a matrix. To do this, let's write, matrix, and call, the constant method, give 1, 2, and, 3, 4. Let's see this matrix. After that, let's see the dimension of this matrix. Let's write, matrix, and, ndim. By default, the data type of integers is int32, and the data type of floats is float32. Note that, the higher the precision, the slower the mathematical operations are. Float32 is often used for quick calculations. The variable method is used like the constant method. The difference between this method is that, the tensor you create with the constant method, is immutable, while the tensor you create with the variable method, is mutable. To show this, let's create two tensors with these two methods. Let's write, v, and then, let's call the variable method, let's pass, 1, 2. Let's write, c, and then, let's call, the constant method, let's pass, 1, 2. Let's see these tensors. Now, let's change the first value with the assign method. Let's write, v, let's pass, 0, and then, let's call, the assign method and let's give, 7. Let's see this tensor. As you can see, we changed the first value. Now, let's try to change the first value of c. Let's write, c, let's pass, 0, and then, let's call, the assign method, and, 7. Let's see this tensor. As you can see, we got an error message that we cannot change the value. Nice. We've seen how to create a tensor with the variable. Let's go ahead and discuss how to create random tensors. When we build neural networks, we often want to randomly initialize the weights. The random module in TensorFlow allows us 
to generate random data. Now, let's create data from a normal distribution. First, let's use the setSeed method to fix randomness. Let's write tf.random and then let's call the setSeed method and let's pass 42. Next, let's write tf.random, let's call normal and then let's set the shape parameter and let's pass 3, 2. Here you go. Nice, we've seen how to create data. Let's go ahead and examine other methods to create tensors. So far, we've covered how to make tensors with the constant and variable methods. Now, let's take a look at how to create a tensor with all elements set to 1 or 0. First, let's examine the ones method to create a tensor of all ones. Let's write tf.ones, let's set the shape parameter, let's give 3, 2. Next, let's create a tensor of all zeros with the zeros method. Let's write tf.zeros and let's set the shape parameter, let's pass 3, 2. You can also convert number py arrays to tensors with the constant method. To demonstrate this, let's import number py as np. Let's first create a number py array, let's say number py a, and then let's write np.arrange, and then let's pass 1, 25, let's set the type parameter, and let's give np.int32. Next, let's convert it to a tensor. Let's say tensor a, and then let's call tf.constant, and let's pass number py a, and let's set shape and let's give 2, 4, and 3. Let's see this tensor. As you can see, we converted the number py array into a tensor. Let's move on to working with dimensions. To go images through neural networks, you can need to adjust the dimensions of the images. New Axis enables you to add a dimension to your tensor, while keeping the same information available. Let me show you this. First, let's create a tensor with the zeros method, let's say, rank 4 tensor, and then, let's call, tf.zeros, let's give, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, have a look at the dimension of this tensor with n dim. As you can see, the dimension is 4. After that, let's add this tensor to a dimension, using new axis. Let's say, rank 5 tensor, and then, let's write, rank 4 tensor, and, let's write, 3 dots, and, let's pass, new axis. Let's see the dimension of this tensor with n dim. As you can see, the dimension is 5. Let's see the shape of this tensor with shape. As you can see, we added a dimension to the end. You can also leverage the expand dims method to add a dimension. Let me show you this. Let's say, rank 6 tensor, and then, let's call, tf.expand dims, let's pass, rank 5 tensor, let's set the axis parameter, and let's pass, minus 1, to add a dimension to the end. Let's take a look at the shape of this tensor, with shape. As you can see, we added a dimension to the end. Great, we've covered how to add a dimension to a tensor. Let's move on to tensor operations. It is easy to perform the basic mathematical operations directly on tensors with Python operators. To show this, let's first create a tensor. Let's say, tensor, and then, let's call, tf.constant, and, let's give, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's add 10 to this tensor. Let's write, tensor, plus, 10. Here you go. Next, let's subtract 10 from the elements. Let's write, tensor, dash, 10. Here you go. After that, let's multiply the elements by 10. Let's write, tensor, the star symbol, 10. This is very simple, right? You can also use functions in TensorFlow to perform these operations. These methods allow you to quickly perform mathematical operators. For example, we can leverage the multiply method for multiplication. Let's call, tf.multiply, and, let's pass, tensor, and, 10. We obtained the same result. One of the most used operators in ML, is matrix multiplication. You can use the matmul method for this. Let me show you this. Let's call, tf.matmul, and, let's pass, tensor, and, tensor. You can also employ at 4 matrix multiplication. Let's write, tensor, at, tensor. Here you go. Note that, when multiplying two matrices, the inner dimensions must be equal. The result will be equal to the outer dimensions. If the internal dimensions are not equal, you can change the tensor dimension with the reshape method. Let me show you this. Let's say, tensor, and then, let's call, tf.constant, let's pass, 1, 2, 3, and then, 4, 5, 6. Let's take a look at the shape of this tensor. Let's reshape this tensor. Let's call the reshape method, and then, let's pass, tensor, and, let's set, the shape parameter, let's give, 3, 2. As you can see, we reshape the dimension of the tensor. 
Now, let's have a look at how to change the data type of a tensor. You may want to change the data type of the tensor to perform mathematical operators faster. As mentioned earlier, the default data type for float numbers is float32. Let's check it out. Let's say, tensor, and then, let's call, tf.constant, let's pass, 1.2, and, 3.4. As you can see, the data type is float32. Let's convert this data type to float16 with the cast method. Let's call, the cast method, and, let's pass, tensor, and, let's set, the D type parameter, let's pass, tf.float16. As you can see, the data type of the tensor now, is float16. Let's go ahead, and take a look at, how to remove all single dimensions. In the previous section, we've seen how to add a dimension to a tensor. In this section, we're going to handle, how to remove all single dimensions. The squeeze method helps us remove dimensions of size 1, from the shape of a tensor. To show this, let's create a tensor. Let's say, tensor, and then, let's call, the tf.constant method, and then, let's use the randint method, and, let's pass, 0, 100, 50, and, let's set, the shape parameter, let's pass, 1, 1, 1, 1, and, 50. Let's have a look at the shape of this tensor. Now, let's remove the dimensions of size 1, with the squeeze method. Let's say, tensor, and then, let's call, tf.squeeze, and let's pass, tensor. Let's take a look at the shape of this tensor. As you can see, all single dimensions have been removed. That's it. I hope you enjoy it. In this video, we explored TensorFlow, and saw that it has great methods, for implementing deep learning projects. You can find the link to the notebook in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and like the video. We also create content, on our other social media accounts. We will be happy, if you follow us. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.